This week I'll be reviewing the second book in the stack. It's uh, Cambridge New Revised Standard Version Reference Edition with the Apocrypha. But to give you a sense for size, I have some other commonly owned Bibles here, starting with the Cambridge Cameo, which is a smaller book, not as wide, not as tall. The Cambridge Reference Edition with the Apocrypha is a bit shorter than the Schuyler Canterbury, but about the same width and perhaps a bit thicker. So it's really not a small volume at all, is it? And finally, here's one that we reviewed a few weeks back, the New Oxford Annotated Study Bible, the 5th edition. Again, it's a bit shorter than the Oxford, but not a lot. A little bit thinner, a little bit less wide, but really not um, radically smaller volume than the large 5th edition study Bible. In fact, it is uh, 8 and 9 sixteenths inches tall, 6 and 3 eighths inches wide, and 1 and 11 sixteenths inches thick. I have it in a broad art archival book cover, which I'm going to take off. Actually, an 8 and a half inch broad art cover fits that dust jacket quite well. This is the way the spine on the actual hardback looks. It's just a hardback, nothing special about it, nothing printed on the back. It has an oil lamp on the front and simply says uh, with Apocrypha. Text comes in two columns. Each column is about 58 millimeters wide with about 44 characters per line and as many as 53 lines uh, per page. The center column here between these uh, dashed lines is um, 14 millimeters wide. Page dimensions are top to bottom 210 millimeters, left to right the width is 155 millimeters, so it's 8.27 inches tall and 6.1 inches wide. The characters are black and they're neither especially bold like an old style King James Version font nor particularly thin like many of the fonts that you see in modern Bibles. It's sort of a happy medium. Margins uh, at the top of the page are about 15 millimeters here. At the bottom is around 10. And uh, the inner margin can be as much as 10 millimeters there. The outer seem to vary between 9 and 10. The font here uppercase letters look to me to be about 9 points, while the lowercase letters look to be about 9.5. That's pretty typical for a Bible font. What I'm doing is I'm comparing this font to Times New Roman, and so the uppercase um, characters look like a 9 point Times New Roman font, but the lowercase are more like 9.5. The line height, the distance between, say, the bottom of that line and the bottom of the next line, is 3.36 millimeters. That's 9.5 points. There are large verse numbers at the beginning of paragraphs. Smaller raised numbers within to tell you which verse you're at. So it makes it a bit tricky with this book to find the verse number so you can tell precisely where you are in the book. And I think we mentioned in passing that it's a paragraph by paragraph format rather than a verse by verse. There are references in the center column. The references are in column order. So what that means is they, as, as you move down the center column references, the things that are being referred to, the reference sites over, are on the left. You get to about the middle of the page. So here's 47, 14 here. 47 to 14 is up here. A uh, center column reference system that's in page order, that 47 to 14 reference would be up here near the top of the page. 
font here in the center column references is about 6.5 points. There are translation notes at the bottom of the page. These are the new revised standard version translation notes. The font there is also about 6.5 points. I like the paper. It, uh, we'll move a lamp around here so we could try to create a bit of a glare for you. And there isn't much of a, a shine or sheen. There isn't a waxiness to the paper. I measured the sheet thickness to be 30.8 micrometers. I estimate the paper weight to be um, 39 GSM. It's a matte surface, uh, white with a hint of yellow with some visible show through. Uh, print non-uniformity is noticeable. Let's see, we'll go to the New Testament and I'll show you pages 203 and 205. That's the kind of difference that I've found. So the page on the left is certainly uh, printed more lightly than the page on the right, but the page on the left is usable, and uh, the page on the right does not have too much ink on it. There are no book introductions, so you just move over to Second Thessalonians and you have a title. Book titles are typically in the outside top, of the page along with the page contents. So this says that the last verse on this page is 318, which is the last verse in the book. Page um, numbers are bottom outside, so they're really easy to find too. Putting the, the book number book titles at the outside of the page is better than putting them over here in the middle, in my opinion. It's easier to find. These pa pages here are a bit wide, but they are not so wide that you can't pretty rapidly move from one book to another. So I think that works pretty well. There are headings in the text. There's one, request for prayer at the beginning of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. They are in about a nine point font as well, and it's an italic font. Uh, each book does begin on a separate page. So if we go back to some of the smaller books like Jude, we see they don't start in the middle of a page like some books are designed, like the Cambridge Cameo, but they start on their own page. Uh, the words of Christ here are in black. You will not see any red letters in this Bible. Words added uh, by the translators for clarity are not in italics, so you will not find any italic print here indicating what the uh, where the translators smoothed out the translation for you, making it less of a word-for-word -word translation. After the book of Revelation, we come to a two-page table of weights, measures, and values in a nine-point font. It talks about length, weights and values, coins, measures of capacity, and then there's a 66-page glossary in two columns. The words that are being defined, like uh, Abba, are in bold. It's in an eight-point font here, approximately, and they include scripture references here, like here's a reference to Daniel chapter 1 and chapter well, those are all in chapter, no, that's chapter 1, and then chapter 3, 8 through 30 at Abednego. Um, after the glossary, there's a map index, title page for the maps. This is sort of a semi-glossy paper. It's not very shiny, but it does shine a bit. It's more reflective than the Bible paper is. I'm having difficulty showing that also, aren't I? You can see that sheen there. So there is a waxiness to the paper back here. The um, map index is eight pages long in two columns, and this is a seven-point font. Um, different colors are used, black, red, and blue, so it's color-coded. Then after the map index, oh, here's the color code, just in case you're curious what the different colors mean. Then the maps themselves, 
There are 15 maps that span 15 pages. They're very colorful, fairly detailed, very nice maps. And some people complain about the shiny surface. I don't mind the shiny surface at all. And these are interesting. They are um, Cambridge University Press 2011 maps in terms of the content, but the base mapping, which I, I suspect is the cartographical details, that was from Oxford Cartographers. After our maps, we just have cardstock. We come to the end of the book. It's interesting here that you can see the threading, or you should be able to see it there in the gutter, one page away from the end of the book. And at the other end, a couple of pages of cardstock, then a presentation page with a flowery border. I'm not sure what the name for that color is. It's not quite pink, not quite purple. Another blank page. A Bible paper. This gives you a sense for the show through. There is some ghosting, but it's not horrible. Title page with Cambridge University Press at the bottom. Here's the copyright uh, page. New Revised Standard Version, 1989. Glossary, Cambridge University Press, 1997. Um, an RSV reference edition. This printing is 2007. Typeset in 8 and 3 quarters divided by 9.5 swift. 9.5 is the line height. 8 and 3 quarters. I believe that's the height, um, the distance essentially. Um, let's put it this way 9.5 minus 8 and 3 quarters, I think, is the white space between the lines of text. 8 and 3 quarters is the top of a capital to the bottom of a descender. Printed and bound by Lego in Italy. You have a table of contents. Nine point font for the contents. Uh, each section, you'll notice, let's go back just a second to show you that. Each section of scripture is numbered separately, so you, the Old Testament goes to 866, and then the apocryphal books start with page 1. The last book in that section, 4th Maccabees, starts on page 249. Then the New Testament comes along. We reset to page 1. Abbreviations for the books of the Bible. Other abbreviations, abbreviations used in the notes at the bottom of the text. Well, those are pretty straightforward, I think. And then an intro from the New Revised Standard Version Translation Committee to the reader in a 9.5 point font. Which they explain their translation philosophy and their sources. And it was written for the Translation Committee by Bruce Metzger, the late Bruce Metzger. From there, one more page, and you are in the Old Testament, and then in Genesis. We're about to do the font comparison section of the video, and I just wanted to show you the books that I'll be using in the comparison. This is a 1986 NIV from Holman. It's uh, an ultra-thin, and just to give you a glance at the book itself, this is it. I may review this at some time if people are interested. And the other book that I'll be showing that you haven't seen before is this uh, old 1993 uh, New Revised Standard Version from Zondervan. It's uh, similar to the book we're reviewing today. It's a double co column format with center column references. So a fairly close-up look at the font, and I think it's a, a nice, nice-looking font. I wish it were just a bit bolder, but it's not bad. And certainly with the line matching here, um, the ghosting isn't particularly bad. You can see printing from the opposite page, but it's not uh, especially disturbing. The line spacing is adequate. I wish there were a bit more, but it's all right. Take a look here at the top of the W and the descenders from the P 
you can definitely see white space in there. So it's uh, it's okay, and uh, the characters, spacing of the characters and the spacing of the words, I think that's well done. I don't have any issues there. Now I'm going to show some other fonts for comparison, just to give you a sense for what it's like. And I'm going to try first to bring over the redesigned or uh, improved, recently improved Cambridge Cameo. So the Cameo is on the right, and our an RSV um, reference edition with the Apocrypha is on the left and I think the Cameo is a bit bolder and uh, I like it better but I like the line spacing better on the left more modern print on the left next uh, for comparison I'm going to bring in a Zondervan an RSV reference edition printed in 1993 and compare the two fonts side by side. There's a bit of white space there, but that's not bad. I think we can see them both. So what do you think? I think they're actually quite comparable. The one on the right's a bit uh, larger. Overall, aesthetically, I would say I probably like the one on the right just a bit more. But they're both attractive. No real issues with either. I think the one on the right is definitely a larger font. Now I'm going to bring in another Bible with a similar sized font. This is a Holman uh, New International Version from about 1986. So the Holman is on the right. A bit of a smaller font. In the Holman. Now, because it has a wider margin, I've put the uh, an RSV New Oxford Annotated Bible on the stand, and I'm going to bring in the Cambridge an RSV Reference Edition on the right, and so you can compare those fonts. Uh, to my mind, the Oxford is superior. It's larger, it has better line spacing, and at least at this spot in the text, it's printed more darkly. I'll say a few words now about the translation itself. I made a video um, a few weeks back comparing the New Revised Standard Version with the English Standard Version in a number of spots, and if you're interested in my take on the NRSP, that would be a good video to watch. Here I'll just make a few comments, and I'll start by showing my translation continuum chart, which shows the NRSP near the center of the pack. It's a bit uh, more literal um, than many of the translations, certainly more literal than the NIV uh, the Jerusalem Bible, the New English Bible, or the Revised English Bible, but not quite so literal as its parent, the Revised Standard Version, or the American Standard Version of the King James Version. Um, it does use gender-inclusive language, um, and sometimes I find that a bit problematic. Um, most, most times the way they've done it, it doesn't cause me a great deal of consternation. But uh, we'll take a look a few look at a few spots here, just for fun. Let's look at Romans 12:20. Uh, it says here in the NRSV, "Now, if your enemies are hungry, feed them; if they are thirsty, give them something to drink." And then uh, you'll pour, pour heap burning coals over their heads. Um, but in the original Greek, it's singular. There is no them or their, they in that verse. It's all a singular person. And the Greek it uses uh, masculine. It's a masculine uh, participle, at least, I think, in that verse. I haven't looked at it recently. Um, but it's singular, not plural. Romans uh, 14, 23. It's a similar kind of thing. Um, but those uh, who have doubts are condemned if they eat um, because they do not act from faith. So again, they've taken a singular and turned it into a plural. Does that cause a, any kind of uh, 
theological trouble? I, I don't know of any. I can't think what the issue there would be. It seems like the meaning is the same. So it's not quite as literal as it could be, but is it inaccurate? I don't think so. Um, here's another one, Second Peter. Go to chapter 1, verse 9. Uh, For anyone who lacks these things is short-sighted and blind and is forgetful of the cleansing of past sins. I think that one is a bit problematic, isn't it? Because that's so vague, forgetful of the cleansing of past sins. Whereas in the original and in most translations, it points it to that person's sins. So that person has forgotten that he, or she, if you like, has forgotten um, his sins, that one person's sins. And this is sort of forgetful of the cleansing of some nebulous individual's or group's sins that occurred in the past. And uh, here's a sign of how things might have been worse. Let's look over here to Galatians. Go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 3. Now, suppose they had made this gender ne neutral or gender inclusive. Uh, I testify to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is, ob ob he is obliged to obey the entire law. Um, they could have attempted to make that inclusive, but they had the good sense not to. So you have to applaud them for that. Well, this is definitely a very nice Bible, and if you like the NRSV, it's certainly an alternate, uh, alternative to the uh, New Oxford Annotated Bible, the 5th edition. Um, personally, I don't think it's a lot smaller as to make it radically portable, and if I had to choose between the two, I think I would go with the Oxford. Um, but if you want just the Bible itself without all those notes and the study material at the back, and you want something that's a bit smaller and lighter, uh, this would certainly be a good option. I like the print better in the Oxford. I like the line spacing better in the Oxford. But this, um, there's nothing really wrong with this book. Um, the hardback is one option. I think I paid something like 35 or $36 for this. If you have uh, more money, uh, you can get this in uh, black French Morocco at the Evangelical Bible website right now as I speak on the 20th of April 2019 for $133. It uh, can also be had there uh, for a mere $240 in a burgundy goat skin. Um, I kind of like the $35 hardback option myself, but uh, there are other ways to buy this Bible. So you get the nice uh, feeling of the goat skin, or the adequate, I think, feeling of French Morocco. I haven't touched the French Morocco on this one um, for your extra money. Well, that's uh, about all I had intended to say on the um, Cambridge NRSV reference edition with the Apocrypha. I hope you found this helpful. Um, please remember to like. If you did like the, the video, please remember to like. And if you haven't done so and you would like to, you're certainly welcome to subscribe. Thank you for your time and attention.